Norway, March 2020. Just as the coronavirus began to unfold, around 2,000 UK military personnel were deployed in the high north for exercise cold response. It takes place every two years, but this one was unique. Exercise cold response 20 will come to a premature end because of the escalating situation surrounding coronavirus. The Norwegian Joint Headquarters has decided to gradually give a termination of cold response. So we will gradually terminate the exercise. Despite some troops coming home earlier than planned, a lot of the training had already taken place. David, Sybils McCann and I were there to see just why cold weather deployments are so important. Battling the elements. Just surviving in the Arctic Circle is a test where temperatures can drop to minus 30 degrees Celsius. But it's not just about survival. Three Commando Brigade, the Royal Navy's elite fighting force, along with Britain's allies, need to be ready to defend Norway in a crisis situation. Cold response is also helping to develop Britain's future commando force, the Royal Marines going back to their commando routes, reminiscent of raiding groups of the Second World War. The amphibious commando units needs to test all its skills. From searching and clearing enemy buildings. Yeah, dump, dump. Keep her up. To moving people and equipment from ship to shore. Uh, so today we commenced an uh, amphibious operation, a commando raid uh, in the beautiful fords of, uh, of Norway. Uh, and we're just establishing now, we landed about 06.45 this morning. Uh, we've got guys forwards in observation posts currently trying to find the enemy uh, and we need to establish a uh, headquarters location in order that we can support them uh, and then bring in fires hopefully and then defeat the enemy. Why is this exercise so important? It's important for a few reasons. Um, we're commandos and we're going through um, an important transformative process within the Royal Marines in the moment. So this exercise is demonstrating some of the capabilities that uh, we have at the moment and that we wish to uh, procure in the future. So uh, really trying to push the boundaries of commando raids and going back to our roots of putting small bands of de determined men uh, ashore to have an overwhelming effect on the enemy. Whichever enemy that might be. Norway rely heavily on, on NATO in its defence and if you are going to, to do a mission here in, 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 in a crisis you need to train so therefore it's extremely important for us. Today we, we don't see Russia as a threat. They have modernised their, their armed forces but what we see in the daily life is that they, uh, they behave mostly professionally. But we have seen some indications where they have uh, acted aggressively, doing simulated air attacks on on uh, Norwegian city, uh, on Norwegian infrastructure. The uh, the future is uncertain, but there are no threat today. Russia set out a 15-year Arctic strategy earlier this year, saying it wanted to encourage cooperation in the region. But over the past decade, Russia has reopened several Arctic military bases. Russia is active and that's one of the reasons why we have the, the NATO alliance. So uh, by training regularly with our partners, uh, interoperable uh, and closely integrated, uh, we are active and, and ready for, for whatever may be required. We're not militarising the Arctic, we've been coming here for decades. So we train regularly with our NATO partners. It's a great training environment for the, uh, for the Royal Marines and those uh, Army and, and Air Force counterparts that come with us. Uh, and that's why we come here, in, in support of the NATO High North. 2020 marks the first of a decade-long training programme the Royal Marines have committed to with their Norwegian counterparts. And to complete cold weather training, 3 Commando Brigade is supported by one of the most versatile units in the Royal Navy, Commando Logistic Regiment. 
David Civils McCann has been finding out how they keep the hundreds of vehicles deployed to the high north operational during the mission. Conditions in Norway's Arctic Circle are tough. The snow, ice and sub-zero temperatures take their toll on the hundreds of vehicles that play a vital role in exercise cold response. The recovery teams of the Commando Logistic Regiment are the ones responsible for preventing it from grinding to a halt. We've got an awful lot of people on the ground at the moment, so the amount of recovery taskings that we've been getting are quite massive. If we don't get out there quick, lads can go down. Uh, it can get down to minus 35 out here quite easily. So our first priority is to get out there as fast as we can, as safe as we can, and get everyone back as safely as possible. Back at base, the workshop is as busy as ever. The mechanics here are on call 24 hours a day, keeping the mission going, as a constant flow of vehicles arrive for repair and maintenance. Mikey at the moment is uh, carrying on and uh, splitting the gearbox and the engine. Um, there's lads doing various jobs, um, lots of inspections going on. And we're sharing this workshop with three different units and we're getting more vehicles in, you know, so it is pretty busy. And it's vital that they keep going. The training area for exercise cold response covers hundreds of kilometres of challenging terrain. And if the vehicles aren't fixed, the Marines in the field aren't going anywhere. The team here is carrying out some vital work, fixing and maintaining kit like this. And with over 300 vehicles involved in this mission, they've got their work cut out for them. The Arctic conditions are also challenging for the mechanics. As well as making sure they're kept busy, the freezing temperatures are far from ideal when trying to repair intricate machinery. Some of them can be fairly challenging, um, just when it's cold and you use the dexterity in your fingers, so it can be fairly, fairly challenging then. But we do have some specialist tools to do the jobs, but then other than that, we just um, buddy buddy and then take five minutes, we warm your hands while someone else works and then swap occasionally. It's said if you can operate here, you can operate almost anywhere. The Arctic Circle provides some of the most challenging conditions anywhere in the world. Keeping mobile in the cold weather and challenging terrain is vital to any mission. And the Commando Logistic Regiment works around the clock to make sure that happens. Of course, it's not just vehicles that have to keep mobile in a country that is beautiful, unforgiving and untamed. It's why not just UK military personnel, but thousands from the USA, the Netherlands, France and other NATO allies train here as part of exercise cold response in a region that's becoming increasingly more strategic. Forces from around the world were still grateful to get at least some of the exercise completed before COVID-19 shut it down. As well as four British Royal Navy vessels, the beating heart of the exercise is the Royal Netherlands Navy ship, the Johan de Witt, a 176 metre long amphibious transport vessel. Johan de Witt has a number of key roles. Primarily, she's the float command platform. So on here we have the two battle staffs of the command of the land forces and the command of the amphibious task force. But the ship is also carrying a large number of troops and vehicles has the ability to offload those either by surface ships using the, the landing craft utility uh, or by the Merlin 4 helicopters from the Aviation Task Force. So what we've been doing is uh, using the Amphibious Task Force to conduct two uh, landings on two separate locations to uh, try and wrong foot the enemy uh, during the scenario. So we've been embarked commandos from 4-5 Commander Royal Marines and also Dutch and uh, Belgian commandos from the 2nd Marine Corps group uh, to, em to uh, land on the coast here in Norway deep in the fjords to cut off some of the enemy's advanced forces. Why do this? Because it's hard to do. It takes a lot of practice. It's good for working between navies, between nations, uh, and it proves NATO's ability to operate up here in the extreme, in the extreme north. For UK defence, being able to respond to any threats from neighbouring countries in the Arctic region and building rock-solid partnerships with allies in the high north are just some of the key aims of the exercise. Also understanding how other militaries operate and working on their ships. 
So we're up on the bridge of Johan de Witt. Uh, to our left is the position of the chief engineer. Uh, to our right is the officer of the watch currently controlling the ship. And the most important part of the bridge is propulsion and steering control uh, to my right over here. The ship is equipped with a very innov innovative uh, propulsion and steering. Um, and it's called dynamic positioning, which means the ship is able to keep its own position at all times fully automatically. So whenever we're doing amphibious operations, the ship is able to control its own position, giving the officer to watch all the time in the world to control helicopters, to practice with the landing craft, to uh, put the landing craft into action and actually operate the ship uh, while the ship operates itself. So it's semi-autonomous? It's semi-autonomous. So the officer of the watch needs to provide the input as to where he or she wants the ship. And once we've put the ship in the right position, we press a button and everything else happens completely automatically. And it's the b single best feature of the ship as far as I'm concerned. A little help from technology goes a long way in this harsh environment. Of course, it's not just ships that have to deal with the sometimes treacherous conditions. It's aircraft too. Joint Helicopter Command has its Merlins, Wildcat, Chinooks and Apaches involved in the exercise. Well, this Chinook and most of the other helicopters have been deployed in Afghanistan and in Iraq. So going from desert conditions to sub-zero conditions here, 200 miles up in the Arctic Circle. This Chinook has specialist skids on it so that when it lands, it doesn't sink into the snow. The helicopters may have some adaptions for the cold weather, but what's it like to fly them? On good weather days, it's very, very pretty. The mountains are incredible. It's like flying through a picture postcard. But when the weather comes in and the snow starts falling, the visibility is reduced quite considerably. It's very, very challenging. You have to make lots of decisions about uh, navigation, uh, when to turn back, lots of fuel considerations and lots of airmanship and captaincy decisions just caused by the weather before we overlay the threat of exercise cold response on top. Um, each year when we come the conditions are slightly different. Um, we have new air crew that come through the system who need to be trained in the environment but equally the skills uh, to fly in this environment um, do atrophy over time so we need to come uh, and practice the airmanship and the capacity decisions required in this environment are applicable all throughout the world. So whilst training the environment is similar year on year in terms of the area the uh, lessons learned can be applied across the full spectrum of uh, commander helicopter force and JHC operations. Many elements of three commando brigade hold RT status so they can be deployed anywhere in the world with just five days notice, which is why exercises like cold response that involve combat scenarios in challenging landscapes are vital. And to make it all happen, David Civils McCann met arguably one of the most important teams of the whole mission. The cooks in the galley of the main camp in Bardafoss are tasked with feeding the troops deployed to Norway for exercise cold response. With hundreds filing in for their meals three times a day, it's up to them to not only make sure there's enough food to go around, but it's also tasty. For us as chefs, if you cook a bad meal, then it's felt throughout the whole camp. Um, and it affects the morale massively. The cooks work in shifts to freshly prepare the food for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And with such a busy workload, preparation is key to making sure everyone is fed. The meals are meticulously planned in advance to ensure the chefs can satisfy the appetites in camp. Our menus are set weekly, so we know what we're doing. And it's usually set, like every Thursday is a curry night, every Friday lunch is a fish Friday, every Saturday evening is a steak night, and then every Sunday night is a Sunday roast. Everything's all set in place, everything's well organised for us. So yeah, we've got a lot of time just to make the scrap as good as we can. There are over a thousand troops based here in the main base in Bardafoss. The intense training in the cold weather they're going through can really work up an appetite. And the cooks here work long hours, making sure everyone gets their three square meals a day. The main challenges are the numbers, definitely. Um, cooking for such large amounts of people, three meals a day, can be quite challenging. But with, with the right team around you, it, def it definitely makes it easier. It's hard work, but the kitchen staff know their role here in Norway is a vital one. The Norway David and I, and indeed all the military, arrived in was a very different one to the Norway we departed, as the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic intensified. 
The irregularity of exercise cold response in 2020 shows why British forces really do need to be ready to adapt quickly to any kind of crisis situation. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.